Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate to you how hijabi feminists use certain platforms to spread their hatred towards men. They use emotional arguments to spread their hatred towards men. And I'm going to show you this in a very simple demonstration. News broke out. This happened um, some years back where a Muslim man in a Muslim suburb in Melbourne in Australia, he basically murdered his own wife because he was forcing them to go to Syria. Whatever the reason is, he did this and he imprisoned his children at home. He broke their bones and he banned them from going to school and yeah, so the story goes on and on. Now, now, will a feminist hijabi stay silent on this? No. Will they profess and use this as a weapon to target men? Yes, of course. So this individual, look, Zainab Daisi Abu Aid, studied at La Trobe University, went to Australian International Academy, apparently highly educated. Okay, hijabi, feminist. You'll see now, you'll see their feminism. Watch. You're probably saying, oh, Aki, why are you calling her a feminist? You know, she's here defending that dead woman. You know, this barbaric man came, killed his wife, abused her, abused the children. Why are you attacking her? I'll tell you why. Because she's promoting her feminism. It's not about her, you know, defending this, the death of this woman. Yes, she's defending the death of that woman. She's pointing out the barbaric action of this husband. But in doing so, she's trying to spread her hatred towards men. Men like you and I. So, let's see what she says. Zainab says, look, she says, quote, she's responding, she's saying, it's so funny how everyone now knows that he is suddenly a scumbag or a monster but failed to speak out when he was living with a woman and three young children. I am sure his characteristics have always been prevalent, and I'm more than positive his family knew his abusive nature, but yet ignored it because it is what some kind of norm for a man to hit a woman. Okay. She says, it's normal. It's what everyone goes through in a relationship. No, not everyone goes through that in a relationship. Okay, so again, she's again, she's this is her attempt of attacking relationships because feminists hate relationships. They hate the idea of man and woman relationship. Of course, if a man is submissive to her, then that's fine. But otherwise, feminists hate the idea of marriage. In fact, for them, it's just, you know, you're limiting yourself. You're suffering. This is their worldview about marriage. And she's expressing that right here in this comment. She then says, now everyone wants to be Zeynep's lawyer. But where were her advocates when she complained? When she was hidden why, as soon as someone speaks out on this issue of domestic violence, it's overlooked. This species grew up with bad morals, the wrong upbringings of Islam, and obviously believed he held superiority because he was a man. Right? So just in that sentence, I mean, I could, I could correct her on, on other things and say, well... Men and women have different gender roles, right? Um, that's why she can't find a female prophet. Is she going to now attack Islam and say Islam has no female prophets, therefore it believes the superiority of a man? <laughs> right? She probably would attack Islam for the very same reasons. Anyway, she says, It was a failure to speak up, a failure to listen. For goodness sakes, the image did not even resonate with some of her family members. She says, this is horrific. This is intolerable 
and quite frankly, this is embarrassing. She says, women, she shouts it, women, even if you have eight kids, you leave an abusive man. They don't change. Lotus, listen to this. Women, even if you have eight kids, you leave an abusive man. They don't change. I cannot even comprehend the emotional distraught and the physical pain the children are going through. Absolutely heartbreaking. So this is a message that I disagree with. She says, even if he has eight kids, if he's abusive, leave him. And this is why we say that these feminists have literally butchered, destroyed so many relationships in society, have compacted on the high level of divorce rates because their solution has been divorce. That's it. If he's abusive, divorce is the answer. That's it. What happened to rehabilitation programs? The same people will say a drug taker can be rehabilitated. A, if a woman murders a man, she could be rehabilitated. She, she can be rehabilitated, right? We've got to show her sympathy and mercy. If a person drinks alcohol, he could be rehabilitated. But men who are pedophiles or men who are abusive to their wives, no, they, they, they can't be rehabilitated. Again, I liked a lot of what she said, but I think although some men believe in extreme forms of patriarchy, it seems you yourself have been infected by extreme forms of modern feminism, which asserts that abusive men don't change. I totally disagree with this. Because there is strong evidence to suggest that men who go through rehabilitation programs do, in fact, change. In fact, if you even looked at your own religion, Umar ibn Khattab, one of the greatest figures in Islamic history, who was one of the four rightly guided caliphs, buried, buried his own infant female child alive when he used to live as a mushrik. A disbeliever. His conversion to Islam was his form of rehabilitation from the customs of the old. This in itself is proof people can change from their evil ways. And we don't have to go back that far. Even in our modern world, we hear stories of converts coming to Islam who lived very thuggish lives, gangster lives, did things like murder, theft, abusing people and women, and they have changed their ways. Got married, led beautiful families, uh, had a loving wife, he was a loving husband, stopped drinking, alcohol, drugs and being abusive. It seems now that unfortunately you came here trying to spread your feminist anti-men views while ignoring the bigger picture. You came here attempting to even blame the wife or people around her for not speaking up, but forgot to blame the system where apparently he was led out of jail before, because apparently he was in jail before, and in fact had mental health issues. You can actually read it from the actual report. It says, I quote, In 2006, a court heard that he, this man who killed his wife, suffered from psychotic episodes. The friend said Rudd had difficulty trusting people after the Pendennis trials and he felt he was poorly treated by authorities while in jail. So the question is, why haven't you once blamed the system, instead concentrated on blaming the family members? It's the system that failed this person, not just those family members that stayed silent. The system should have given him the treatment he needs before releasing him out back into the public. But you refused. You stayed silent on that. Finally, not too long ago, I believe a hijabi woman who is from Pakistan, I believe it was uh, in the east or southeastern areas in Melbourne, in Australia, 
she murdered her own baby by first suffocating her and then dumping her little water, sorry, dumping her little body in a water stream. She then tried to blame it on a black man. She was later caught and confessed to her murder, thanks to CCTV footage. Later, they said she was, she was suffering from postnatal depression. And basically, she got off very lightly, not even a long prison sentence. I believe she was in some sort of a corrections program, like a rehabilitation program, counselling program, in a mental ward, locked up for, I believe she needs to do it for about 12 months. Question, should I look at this and hate women and say they can't change and she should be locked up for good? Should I start blaming the entire woman race and say these women can't change? It's just their natural instinct to be the way they are. You know, that species. If I did, you will most likely cast me as a misogynist, right? So why aren't you then classified as a man-hater for your comments? It's clear in both cases, both these individuals were mentally disturbed. So stop trying to use this platform as an attempt to attack one gender just because you may have been a victim of abuse growing up. Uh, by the way, folks, going back to that Pakistani woman with a hijab frying her own daughter into the stream after suffocating her, I remember many women advocates groups came out. They were saying, oh, you know, um, you know, the system failed her. She wasn't given proper, adequate um care and concern um, she wasn't um, you know you know the government failed to act they didn't come and give her help and um, you know give her treatments whether it be psychological based on her mental health being challenged because of her life circumstances you know she went through divorce she was obviously going through postnatal depression you know we shouldn't just blame her we should blame the system you know this is what the feminist or say not the feminist but most of the women in power the, these are the women the, the so-called women in society when that news broke out this is what they were saying Hijabi Muslim women were defending her, saying, you know, she was going through a health crisis, she was going through a mental crisis, you know, she went through marriage crisis, you know, we shouldn't just be blaming her, it's a system that failed her, whatever, whatever, whatever. But here, but here, you know, why aren't they doing the same thing? When a man is known to be mentally challenged, mentally disturbed, having psychotic episodes, being in prison before, why are we blaming the system? But instead, we are trying to use this as an attempt to blame men as just being men. They're just evil. This is what they do. This is how they behave. When the bottom line is, this man isn't like all men. This man is literally suffering from a mental illness. He's sick. He needs help. So this is the double standards I constantly see in the rhetoric, in the rhetoric of these feminists, man-hating feminists. The double standards when a woman commits a crime and a man commits a crime. With that, that said, thank you for enjoying the video. Please rate, subscribe, share. And here's, sorry, I did say I'm going to close the video, but as I was about to close it, I just remembered another point. Here's another point. Remember we spoke about Umar ibn Hattab. We spoke about how he buried his own infant daughter. Now, he didn't just do that. Remember, according to the Hadith narrations, he also used to abuse his own sister. How did he abuse his own sister? Remember when in secret, when she was with her husband, she was reading the Quran secretly. Umar ibn Hattab would come into her house, into the sister's house. When he used to find out that she was reading the, the Quran in secret, he used to go and beat her up and she would be crying. He used to beat her up. Now, 
if, and here is the thing, folks, here's the thing. If Umar ibn Khattab existed today in this day and age, Wallahu al-Azim, Wallahu al-Azim, if he if it was known that he was beating his own sister for reading the Qur'an, if it was known that he buried his own daughter alive, and suppose Umar ibn Khattab claimed and came on the media and said he's converting to Islam, what would the feminists say? What would those hijabi feminists say? Would they approve of Umar ibn Khattab's deen? Would they approve of his conversion to Islam? Abadan, no way. <laughs> no way in the world. They will, not, they will not accept his conversion to Islam. They'll say that this person is a bad image to Islam. They'll say that this person is a misogynist. This person is a misogynist, right? This person is a woman abuser. This person is a murderer. He killed his own daughter. Wouldn't they say that? I mean, think about it for a moment. Think about it for a moment. Andrew Tate, when he became a Muslim, he did far less than what Umar ibn Hattab did. And when the feminist heard, the Muslim feminist hijabis, when they heard Andrew Tate's conversion to Islam, Wallahi, there were feminists, there were Muslim hijabis coming out. You know what they were saying? If Allah accepts Andrew Tate in his religion, then we are leaving. I'm ready to leave Islam. Wallahi, we have the screenshots. I can put it as a hyperlink below this video. You can see it for yourself. Feminist hijabi, Muslim, they're saying we if, Andrew, if it's true that Andrew Tate accepted Islam, we're leaving Islam. <laughs> Wallah! Can you imagine if Umar ibn Khattab was here today and they heard he was abusing his sister, he uh, killed his own daughter, and he turned around and said, I'm accepting the, the message of Islam. Can you imagine what these feminists, they would rip into Umar ibn Khattab. Do you think they'll leave Umar ibn Khattab? They'll bring false charges, they'll try and imprison him, right? Exactly what they were doing to Andrew Tate, yeah? Celebrating. When Andrew Tate was going into jail, they were all celebrating, right? Because he had some, you know, apparently according to them, women-hating views. Can you imagine, can you imagine what they would have done with Umar ibn Khattab? By the way, folks, I'm going to put also a hyperlink below this video. You know, all these feminists want to demonize men. Oh, these men are so evil. Look what they're doing. Look how they abuse women and so forth. Wallahi. I'm, I'm not going to share it in my video, but I'll put it as a hyperlink below this video. You can go see it for yourself. Such a distressing video. Okay, so... I'm giving you a warning. I'm giving you a heads up, okay? If you're suffering from mental health issues or if you're suffering from some sort of depression or if you're going through some grief, I suggest you don't watch it. But if you want to see the point about how, you know, women constantly demonize men, you'll see in this video how a woman is abusing a small child, Alda Billah, in a horrific manner, right? Honestly, when I couldn't, I couldn't bear to watch it, and I honestly didn't want to share it. But unfortunately, I have to resort to such me measures in order for the message to get through. Right? Men are not the only ones who commit evil. Okay? Women, given the opportunity, will also cross the limits and create evil, even against the most vulnerable. Thank you.